Hello, I'm Dr. Jazz Ayeri. Everybody knows me as Dr. Jazz. Um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, lumps and bumps under the skin. And these are the most common things that we see. We're not going to talk about, you know, esoteric stuff. Uh, but I see a lot of these and I just want to go over these. So, um, first of all, uh, when a lot of people hear the term tumor, they get concerned. A tumor, um, tumor, comes from the Greek word tumer, which means swelling. Um, so basically a swelling uh, is a tumor, is a growth under the skin, and it can be either benign or malignant. Benign means obviously it's non-cancerous, malignant means it's cancerous. So a tumor by itself doesn't mean that, you know, there's some dangerous going on. Um, so the two most common things that we see are lipomas and uh, a lot of people call this sebaceous cyst, but it's actually a misnomer. I, I like to call these epidermal inclusion cysts. So I'm going to um, wipe this up. So, so I'm going to draw the skin here. So we have the skin. And then we have, you know, all these fat cells here. And then typically we have muscle and you know could be bone or bowel or something down here so a lipoma lipoma is an abnormal growth of normal fat cells so what happens is these fat cells start growing okay and you get this and they push up against the skin so you see you see this thing uh, and these are all fat cells okay so, uh, typically, clinically, these, these fat cells, uh, or when, when one feels a lipoma, uh, it's right under the skin and it's mobile. Uh, depending on the location, it can be kind of spongy, you know, especially on the back, for example. It feels spongy, but it does move. Uh, in the extremities, like especially up here, it feels more like a marble, but you can grab it. It's easily identifiable, the edges and it can be moved. If, if, uh, if there is a mass that looks like a lipoma, but it doesn't move, it's probably not a lipoma, and more uh, work on needs to be done. So the, um, the treatment for this, I have done some uh, lipomas, for example, on the shoulder of a young woman, and the, the concern on the shoulder, because there's a lot of tension on the skin, is if we cut the, you know, if we cut over the skin and take this lipoma out, uh, the scar may widen. So what I did is I actually made small stab incisions and I liposuctioned it as much as I could, and I told the patient there is a chance that, that it may come back more than if it was an excision. Uh, but if it comes back smaller, then we can make a smaller incision and take it out, and the scar would not be as noticeable. But most of the time, uh, you know, we just make an incision over the lipoma and we do it obviously in the relaxed skin tension line so the patient gets the best scarring. And the lipoma just kind of comes out. They're all kind of stuck together. Um, and then we close it. Okay, the other, the other common things that we see is, let me wipe this up. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people call this a sebaceous cyst. This is a misnomer, okay? This is, uh, this is not what most commonly we see. A sebaceous cyst is not very common. I may have seen only two to three uh, in my 20 years. So that means sebaceous means fat. So basically some of the, the uh, oil glands, they get stuck uh, underneath the skin and they keep producing oil. And when you cut into the cyst, you get oil out and then you have to cut out the cyst. Um, so what typically people call a sebaceous cyst is actually an epidermal, epidermal inclusion, inclusion cyst. Okay, epidermis, epidermal comes from epidermis skin, so it's a, it's a cyst that includes skin, okay? So what happens is you have skin, okay, and this is the fat. So typically, it's either an ingrown, most of the time it's an ingrown hair or this trauma to the skin causes, you know, the hairs to go under the skin. 
and these hairs are still alive, so they're, they're, they have, you know, this, uh, they're still producing, the skin around them is still shedding like normal skin, but they have nowhere to go. So you get all this skin just kind of piling up, and this is dead skin and live skin, and you get this lump, okay? Um, and typically the history with these is, the patient says, you know, sometimes it, this, this uh, lump gets red and swollen, they give me antibiotic, it gets better, or they go to the ER and they lance it and some stuff comes out. And typically, <clears throat> if you imagine mixing cream cheese and blue cheese, it's, that's the, how the consistency of this material is. So it's, it's kind of creamy and <laughs> crumbly at the same time, and the color is like a bone color. And sometimes it stinks because it's dead skin. Uh, I had a guy for eight years, he was getting this lump uh, in, a, in a part of his body. They treated him with antibiotics. And, or they lanced it and it came coming back. He, he saw me, I took care of it, and, you know, he, he, was, he was fixed. So the question is, well, why is this coming back? Well, what happens is when you have this stuff here, your body does not like it, and it tries to get rid of it. It can't. So it tries to wall it off. So your body forms a cyst around all this area that's producing this, uh, this skin, skin cells. And if we don't take out the, the wall, the cyst, it will do the same thing forever. Okay? So, and, it, and I, sometimes it actually looks like a very thin eggshell. So we have to, you know, make an incision, again, take out the cyst wall and the, and the material inside, and then close it. And that usually takes care of it. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, because that's important, is... You know, what if you have a little lump on your forehead right here? Um, it could be a lipoma, it could be one of these cysts, it could be also an osteoma. Okay, osteoma. An osteoma is like a lipoma, but it involves bone. So it's an abnormal growth of bone cells, of normal bone cells. Um, and if there is any question, the doctor needs to do a CAT scan because the treatment is totally different. Uh, we cannot cut and take out the osteoma. Because if you look at it, you know, this way, you have this, this bone. It's an excess growth of bone, and this is your skull. Okay, so the only way to get rid of this, we have to get an electric burr and just kind of shave it off. So you, you just kind of shave it off in layers. Shave it off, shave it off, shave it off until you get, you know, a little bit kind of like this. Okay, and that usually takes care of it. I mean, microscopically, there may be some of these fat, these bone uh, cells that can grow again, but you know, most of the time they don't come back. So you know, it'll be very embarrassing for the doctor not doing his his or her homework, making an incision. You know, under local, the patient is awake. And says, oh, it's bone. I gotta take you back under anesthesia and take care of this. So uh, make sure you have a clear diagnosis for this. Um, and these feel hard. The, the, the osteomas, they don't move. They feel very hard. Um, the other thing that commonly we see lumps and bumps is usually on the wrist, usually on the back or here. Um, and these are usually ganglion cysts. So what happens is, you know, we, the bones between the wrist, uh, you know, there's this layer here, and somehow this layer now is connected to the skin. Okay? And, and there is all this fluid between the bones, so the bones can move, right? And somehow there is this connection now, and this fluid goes here, and you get this, you know, this cyst. That's really a cyst. The cyst really has fluid. Um, and, you know, the treatment for this, you can, you can pop them, you know, you can squeeze them. Sometimes they put steroids in there, but really if you want a definitive treatment, this requires surgery as well. Um, and so we make an incision. Again, the key is to make sure to go here and get rid of this. You've got to scrub this off or wipe it off so that hopefully it won't come back. Again, this is the source, not up here. Um, while, I'm, while I'm here, um, let me talk to you about moles too because I see this quite a bit. Now, a mole technically is not under the skin. Uh, you can see it above the skin, but let me, let me talk to you about moles because it's re really important. So this is the skin, and we got these melanin cells, right? The melanin is what gives you pigment, what color to your skin. 
melanin cells, okay? So these cells keep growing, and again, you have an abnormal growth of these, and it comes out and you get a mole, okay? So <clears throat> a lot of non-plastic surgeons, when a patient have a mole, they say, well, I'm going to shave it off for you. So they shave it off, it heals really quick, there's almost no scarring, uh, but these cells are still going to grow, and you're guaranteed to get a mole back. So if you want to get rid of a mole, you've got to go to a plastic surgeon or somebody who does plastic surgery closure. You have to cut out this mole and close it. So yes, you will have a scar just like all the other lumps and bumps. But if they do it right in the right area, it should heal well. So don't let anybody shave a mole for you because it will come back, okay? Um, well, I hope this was informational for you. I hope it helped you a lot. If you have any more questions, please visit our website www.drjaz.com, drjaz.com. Thank you.